Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this episode, I'm going to tell you why and show you how I use Mod Organizer 2 when making mods. Now, I'm doing this as the second episode in my new playlist, Beginner Basics for Writing Skyrim Mods, because I use Mod Organizer 2 in all of my episodes. We're going to start almost every episode in the series by making a mod, and I use Mod Organizer 2 to do that. So. I want you to understand why so that it doesn't seem so confusing and you do not have to use Mod Organizer 2. And it all comes down to keeping track of my mods files. So here we're going to make a mod using Creation Kit without Mod Organizer 2. I'm just going to go to my Skyrim Special Edition directory. I'm going to open up Creation Kit. And if you don't get this little white box, it's because you don't have the Skyrim Special Edition um, creation kit fixes installed, which you don't need, but I highly recommend. So check out the first episode in this beginner basic series for a quick tip on how to do it. So uh, let's make a mod. I'm just going to save it and call it hello mod or my mod. And I'm going to add some files. So I'm going to make a quest and I'll call it uh, my mod quest. And I'm going to open it up and uh, I'm going to make a bunch of scripts. Now, I'm going to attach these scripts to my quest. Uh, however, I, um, I would normally have these scripts attached to a variety of different objects. I just want to show you what happens when you have a number of different scripts. So I'm going to make the first script, hello mod script one. I'll just make three of these. Hello mod script two. Hello mod script three. Cool. And now one other thing I'll do is uh, let's go to our data directory, and in here we can see my mod, and uh, in scripts we can see my mod script dot px, and in source we can see uh, thirteen thousand nine hundred and ten scripts plus ours. So my mod. So if we search for my mod, they're right here. If yours are an in script source, then look in source scripts and they will be there. Um, but there's also a special folder called like dialog views. I'm going to sort this by date modified and I'm just going to make a dialog view. Uh, my mod quest dv1, whatever. Uh, dv1 branch one. Doesn't matter what we call this. Oops, I meant to make a branch. DV1 branch 2. Doesn't matter what these things are called. And it'll make a topic. Here we go. Uh, now, if I hit OK and I save and I look in this folder, uh, dialog views, and I search, I'll see that uh, uh, dialog views were created for each one of my dialog view. There's two new files in here. Um, and if I were to do something like, uh, I don't have much in my sounds voice directory, but if I were to open up this quest mod, uh, open up one of these, uh, make a new topic with some response text, and record, hello, how are you today? And I'm going to save that. Let me fix that. I had a file in data sounds that needed to be in data sound, but I just want to show you, uh, I recorded, I hit save, and I end up with this uh, um, my mod ESP with some, with some files in it and this temporary wave file. Um, so here we are, and uh, for all of our scripts, uh, we can find our scripts kind of scattered throughout the data directory. You can imagine if I wanted to package up this mod for distribution on some place like Nexus Mods, it would be quite frustrating. I would have to maybe write a script that would search for all of these, um, but it's extra challenging because uh, some of them, some of these files don't start with like my mod. These ones are just a uh, big old form numbers. So um, here I'm going to delete everything we created. And delete that. From sound, I'm going to delete the MyMod ESP and this temporary wave that was created. Um, 
in uh, script, so I'm going to delete the MyMod script. In a source, I'm going to delete the MyMod script 1, 2, and 3. They're kind of scattered throughout, and I will delete the MyMod.esp. Now let me show you what this whole experience is like if we use Mod Organizer 2, and um, you may already be able to guess what you're about to see. I'm going to open it up. Now my Mod Organizer 2 may look a little bit different than yours. I'm using a theme so that I can make the text a lot bigger for you. Uh, so what I normally do is uh, I sometimes have different profiles for different mods. So I'll call this my mod. Use the default settings. Um, and then inside of my mod, I'm going to create an empty mod. Now wherever your um, Nexus, uh, your Mod Organizer 2 is configured to store your mods, like here for me, this is where it's going to create your mod folder. Uh, I've got those 12 and 5 episode series that kind of uh, show you how I do things and you'll end up with uh, uh, both, both Vortex and Mod Organizer 2 uh, looking at a certain directory for mods. So you can see here's my two mods and here's my two mods. So I'm going to create an empty mod. I'm going to call it my mod. And what happens is on the file system there's a new my mod folder created. And now I want to run creation kit tell creation kit that I'm working on my mod. So the way I do that is I go to this drop down, I go to edit, I choose creation kit from the list, and I choose create files in mod instead of overwrite. You don't need to know about overwrite, uh, not at this time. So you create files in mod and you just choose your mod. So in this case it's my mod. Hit OK. Uh, if you run creation kit right now it'll complain because you need to, uh, for this to work, add this little checkbox next to my mod. Now we'll run Creation Kit using Mod Organizer 2. Now I'm going to hit the Save button. I'm going to save this as my mod. Now notice that it's saving into Skyrim Special Edition data. That's very important. It should save there. However, now if on my file system I go to Skyrim Special Edition data and I look for this folder for my mod, I don't find it there. However, if I go to my my mod directory, which Mod Organizer 2 created for me, the ESP is right there. How wonderful. And if I make a new uh, quest again, let me load all of Skyrim so I can drink my tea. Takes less than 10 seconds. Sorry for the drinking sounds, especially if you have misophonia like I do. Um, go to character quest, new, um, my mod quest, whatever you want to call it. Hit OK. I'm going to search for my mod. I may be moving a little bit quickly. I just want to show you things that will make files. So let's make a new script. And we'll just call it uh, my mod script 1. And I'll make a my mod script 2 and 3. just for demonstration purposes. These scripts may be attached to objects and NPCs. I'm just showing you, um, oops, all right, I'll call it three, not two. But I'm just doing this so that you can see me creating a bunch of scripts. And I'll hit OK, and I'll save. Uh, now, if we go again, you can kind of guess, guess to our, uh, our data folder and go into uh, scripts. You won't see any of our scripts there. But if you go to our mods, my mod, there was a scripts directory created, which has all of these files and has all of our source code files for it. As you can imagine, this is a much easier experience for keeping track of your files uh, for your mod and packaging them up for release on Nexus and GitHub, etc. because it keeps all of your mod files in one place. Uh, and additionally, if we were to go to our quest, uh, create a dialog view, say new, uh, DV1 for dialog view. And hit OK. This dialog view is outside of data. I wanted to see a dialog view file get created, which normally it does for me. Let me make a new branch. DV branch 1. Oops, I <laughs> did it again. Uh, DV branch 2. Whatever. Double click here, um, topic text, make a new response, response, hit OK, uh, go here. This is my example response. 
done, save, hit OK, hit OK, hit OK, hit OK, and save. Now if we go into our mod folder, we can see two things. One, uh, here are those little XML files for dialog views. So we know where our dialog view XML files are. You don't have to understand what those are right now, but we didn't create them amongst the thousands and thousands and thousands of files for us to try and figure out how to go find, because they've got these ridiculous names. But also our sounds showed up here in sound voice, my mod. We have our temp as well, a temp lib file, um, uh, and uh, a process file, um, resampled audio. Let's see if this is our audio. This is my example response. Cool, I have a lot of background noise. I've got a lot of uh, reverb here. So um, that's it. That's why I do it. I'm going to close out here. Um, now, if I wanted to get rid of my mod to clean it up, I just right click, remove mod. Yes, I'm sure. It's gone. It's totally gone. Co totally, completely gone. It's not in this folder anymore. It's not in my data directory. That is why I use Mod Organizer 2, and that's why you will see me use Mod Organizer 2 throughout this series. So, as always, it's not a requirement at all, um, but we're going to be making a lot of mods and a lot of uh, scripts for them, so if you want to better organize those and not have them just scattered throughout your data directory, then uh, I recommend you look into using it. Um, you can uh, either go through this episode that I just recorded and watch how I did it or watch any episode in the series at the beginning of every episode we're going to talk about what we're going to do in a mod and we're going to create the mod we're doing that so I get you used to how quickly and easily you can create a mod so we're just going to do a repetitive 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 creation of mods because uh, it's quick and it's easy so that is it peace and uh, I'll see you in the next episode Happy modding. All right, bye-bye.